All right, let's get their thoughts on this and other news from our final MP panel of the week. Conservative Parliamentary Secretary Erin O'Toole, NDP MP Robert Chisholm. We invited Elizabeth May, the Green Party leader, but apparently she's wandering around on Parliament Hill. I guess she didn't get the message we were moving the show to the studio. So, sorry, Elizabeth. All right, let's get right to this prosperity of mine. I think this is going to be history in the making, viewers, because I think you two guys are going to agree on this one. Prosperity of mine, no to that. Um, I thought you guys were all in favor of resource extraction. Well, I think this exemplifies the fact that we are in favor of resource development and job creation from it, but we want a balance with the environment. And this was a case where this project was looked at both in 2010 and, and uh, the recent report has, has shown that there's too much risk with the proximity of a very important body of water. And this is a project that, um, that in its form shouldn't go forward. Uh, there's some advocates on the ground in, in BC that, that uh, take issue with that, but that's, that's why these assessments are done. I think it's an example that there are projects that will go forward, but there are also ones that the environment will trump, and this is a great example. Interesting. Like, I wonder if this sets up um, an interesting decision on, say, the Northern Gateway Pipeline, which goes through BC, mm -hmm. and there's some mm -hmm. sensitive environmental areas there. Well, it's interesting. You know, when the, when the, panel, uh, the panel looked at this from what May... 2012 and they finally reported in uh, in October of 2013 uh, and on every on every grade they said no right whether they in terms of the debt you know the 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 risk to the uh, to the water water quality to uh, fish uh, to habitat to the riparian uh, uh, condition between the water and the and the land to the wildlife they said no all the way along and, and this was under the new uh, uh, Canada Environmental Assessment, Canadian Environmental Assessment right. Act of 2012 that was changed so much and we were concerned about it. Um, so it works. So, so, it, works. so it goes to the minister. So, you know, this was such a slam dunk that even under that, uh, uh, even under that act that was changed so, uh, so much, uh, they still had to say no. And, and I look, uh, when I saw this last night about midnight, when I saw the decision, yeah. I said... Good for you, Minister, and good for you, yeah. um, Cabinet, to uh, to not overrule your own panel. Like I say, history was made here today. Well, doesn't he say that every night? Good, <laughs> good job, government. Before Elizabeth May, I was going to actually praise you as well, so I can I can say safely there. Okay. It, it's an example of you know we have to look at these yeah. these projects. They do ac drive our economy, our health care. All these services are provided by. Uh, our job creators out there, but we have to have some balance, and that's what the the act is for, and why the review was made. And uh, so I think it things worked out the way they should. You know, there are some local, you know, some local folks are, are concerned about this decision. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, conservative backbencher uh, uh, Dick Harris um, wanted to see these go ahead for jobs and economic prosperity and so on. The, but the the problem is, and what you know, uh, people have to con increasingly realize is that. You know, if you screw up the environment, if you screw up the, you know, the air and the, and the land and the wildlife and the capacity for things to grow, then you, you may have jobs for the next 20 years, but then what? Yeah. Um, you know, and we, we've got to pay a lot, more talent, a, a lot more attention to the whole question of balance. Speaking of balance, um, we have a surplus coming our way. Uh, next year, the surplus could be $6 billion. Uh, Jim Flaherty has said so. And... Um, fair whack of that's going to go to tax breaks. So they've signaled that already. But, you know, I was listening to the big city mayors today, and they say, you know, uh, productivity's lagging because we're all sitting in traffic. Uh, there's not enough transit lines out there, and they're all looking with big palms out, saying the, the feds help us out of this situation, particularly on social housing as well. Aaron, I mean, is it time to start thinking that Maybe it's not all about tax cuts, that surplus. Maybe you should spend a little bit more on these uh, projects to help people get to work faster, for one. Well, the great thing, and I think some of the mayors did talk about the Build Canada plan, which is a really ambitious uh, infrastructure plan over multiple decades mm -hmm. that we've committed to. Um, as Minister LaBelle said yesterday in the House in response to questions, uh, all aspects of that large fund are eligible for for transit so you know to address gridlock in some of our cities that will be a multi-year stable source of funds the government has committed to to lines in Toronto and Vancouver already 
On top of that, Don, what our government has done, and I hear from my more smaller town or smaller city mayors, is the gas tax. You know, we have locked in and increased the transfer of gas tax uh, uh, to the municipalities. We've not only locked in and made it permanent, we've indexed it. So that's a stable source of infrastructure funding for municipalities, large and small, across the country. The Build Canada plans on top of that. So what's great about the, the coming surplus, and I, we've got to say we're still not in balance, but our plan has been balanced. We've made long-term investments in infrastructure, um, and we're getting to balance on track, on time, like we promised. And then we've said there'll be tax relief. I love hearing uh, Robert's party and, and even the Liberals talking about tax relief, because it's not something we normally hear from them. But the Prime Minister's been clear. We won't get into that until we're at a balanced budget. Robert, are they, should they start pumping more in, or is what they put in place acceptable? Well, the question is, you know, the government distinguishes between, you know, a financial deficit in terms mm -hmm. of the, you know, the uh, revenues and expenditures of the of the gov federal government versus all these deficit estimated to be six hundred billion dollars. We were infrastructure deficit in this country, and that's what the. That's what the mayors are talking about. Um, you know, um, my mayor from HRM, uh, Mike Savage, was here, and he's very concerned that this Build Canada fund is just not enough. That you know what they're talking about—they're rolling out 200 million this year, which is like one percent of the total amount that's going to be rolled out over a decade. It's just simply not enough. And you know, the Conservatives, uh, Aaron, you, you guys got to recognize the fact that if you keep putting off. Um, you know, allowing this infrastructure to be built in your city, in my city, you know, there's going to be uh, real problems that are going to continue to grow. Things are starting to to fall apart, um, and and it, and it and it and it affects productivity, as they've said. It affects quality of life, and it's you know, it's money that's going to have to be invested I'm at glad, some point. Maybe I'm glad not Robert, on your, maybe not on your watch, because <laughs> after 2015, you guys aren't going to be there I'm glad anymore. Robert but mentioned somebody's Halifax. going to have to do something about it. Uh, if you guys aren't, Halifax is one of my will. one of my favorite cities. I met my wife there, and uh, we. We had Mayor Savage before our trade committee. He knows the work we're doing on trade to build markets for the Port of Halifax. And as Robert knows, our government has already made substantial investments in the Port of Halifax, which Mayor Savage thanked our government for. So in our last seven to eight years, minority and majority, we've made key investments already in infrastructure. The Build Canada plan is really a transformational plan that's multi-decade and allows municipalities to do it with the gas tax still there as well, Don. So I think we have the but, balance right. But it's, okay. The thing is, though, it's, it, it's not enough, Aaron. That's, that's the issue. And, you know, you've you got to watch. You don't twist your back out of, out of joint reaching back there to pad it because, <laughs> you know, we've got a real problem in our city that you love so much with public transit, for example. Oh, nothing as like well Toronto. As in, as w <laughs> Toronto, as well as infrastructure. And, and, the Build you Canada know, Fund is we there need, and has dedicated you know, the, ability the to access government. transit. It's the senior level of government that has all the taxing authority, and they need to be able to start turning this money back to the municipalities right. so that they can fund this uh, this infrastructure that's so desperately needed. And, and, and Mike Savage was on the show uh, mm -hmm. when the building fund was announced, and he didn't seem to have a problem with it. So that's right. Well, he, complaining. When, when the budget, he's a former Liberal listen, MP, by the way. But Don, when the budget came <laughs> down, when this budget came down, he was very quick to say, uh, as he said before, that. That money isn't even out the door yet. Those projects haven't been approved, and we know that the first year it's one percent of that total uh, Bill Canada. Quick last topic I want to get to. I don't understand your question period attack, uh, Robert Chisholm. The NDP has got this fixation on this election, on this Fair Elections Act. Are you? Picking up that the public is actually worried about this because I never hear about it at the water cooler. Why are you so hard on it? For two reasons. One is that it's it's just wrong. It's uh, you know this government has has made some incredibly partisan changes to something that should not be partisan. It's a uh, you know the Canada Elections Act is something that affects all of us. You know they they went into this without consulting with the chief electoral officer for the love of God. You know they they've just been handling it every step along the way in a very partisan way. We've heard from you know hundreds of thousands of Canadians uh, in different ways that are saying to us they're concerned uh, about what this government is doing. They don't know enough about what it is that they're doing. As we bring out the details and, and ask for clarification, what we see is that the government is limiting the ability of, of many Canadians, as Tom said today, Canadians that don't traditionally vote for 
conservatives, they're limiting their ability to vote, and they're changing the financing act or the financing provisions, which are again All right. uh, benefiting the conservatives. Aaron. That's why we need to stay on. Aaron top of O'Toole, this. is your phones burning up in your office on this one? Uh, no, they're not, Don. And I think I, on a previous panel when we first talked this. Uh, Canada's foremost expert, 17-year uh, head of Elections Canada, gave it an A minus. You know, yeah, it's I a, couldn't believe that it, when he said it, but he did. It's it's <laughs> well, a pretty good was, grade, and a lot of the on, uh, to address to address right, Robert's was, remarks. Talk, let's go back and talk. Okay, well, a lot, a lot, a lot of the a lot of the recommendations came from the current head of Elections Canada, and are embedded in there. I, I you know, it's sad that the the critic for the NDP and even appears Mr. Mulcair haven't read. The act. They haven't come read on, the new. On. They haven't read that, the. They haven't know, read the Newfeld report. The Newfeld <laughs> report. I'd invite Robert to look at. It is the one that has shown there's a 25 percent error rate with vouching. The voter identification card, which we're focusing on today in the House, Elections Canada, in their pilot of this program over the last two elections, have shown that there's a one in six error with these with these uh, these and get out the vote. Right, so and what we, we and what we're said, taking there, the changes so to make it work. We're better. done. You we're talked done. out we're the done. clock. We're done. <laughs> Good thing we didn't have Elizabeth here. We wouldn't have got finished today. <laughs> All right. Coming up after the break, he founded the Reform Party 26 years ago, but Preston Manning remains a father figure to the ruling Conservative Party. His huge convention comes to town tomorrow. We'll preview it right after these messages. Please stay with us.